it's already autumn, but we will not be talking about how fast time has flown this year. Instead, we'll be talking about what's new in this release of Home Assistant 2023.10. We'll start in a couple of seconds. Before we jump into what's new in this release of Home Assistant, let's talk about what will be new this month. If you still haven't seen, there will be additional stream this month at 12th of October, where we will be looking at Chapter 4 of the Year of the Voice. I really do recommend that you join the stream and see what devs have been doing the last couple of months. I know that some of you have been waiting this for a long, long, long time. But let's get back to today. Today we'll be looking at what's new in the latest release of Home Assistant. As always, this video has been recorded on the beta release of Home Assistant to be exact, at the Beta 6. I try to record those videos as late as possible, so that all of the features have been either ironed out, if there are any bugs, or that features that will not end up in release have already been removed. And if you're wondering why I do those videos, and on the other hand I'm not sure that I will be doing them in the future, well, I do video releases on every Wednesday, and that's also the day when Home Assistant pushes their main release. If you do like these videos, don't forget to give me a like, also drop a line down below, because I'm considering to pull those videos out, not do them anymore, instead of them push some other content. It all depends on how many comments I get to keep doing those videos. If you by any chance miss the video from Nabucasa and Hope Assistant about their 10 and 5 year anniversaries, you then possibly missed information about the logo change. In this release of Home Assistant, the new logo has been fully implemented. You know that you have all the release of Home Assistant if you see chopped up logo like this. In the future release or the next release, this will be fixed and everything has been aligned with the new design. While we are already talking about the new design, a couple of weeks ago I posted a video about the latest changes to the tile cards. How the AC, heating, cooling, hot water, humidifier, things have changed and how tiles have been improved. Well, we have additional improvements in this release of Home Assistant. One thing that was previously missing was presets, and some of the smart valves or smart thermostats or whatever do already have presets. How to add them? It's easy. Click on three dots, edit, in the features, select add feature, climate preset mode, and save. And now you have presets for this smart thermostatic radiator valve from Tado, I have Away, Home and Auto. But that's not all. You can further customize it, depending on how you like your UI. You can change the list, drop-down list, from drop-down to icons. So you have icons instead of drop-down list. But that's not even all. You can also customize what you see in the list. For example, I don't want to see Away mode or Home mode and I can toggle them. While we are only talking about this change, there is additional change. Not just in a tile climate related cards. This helper that is either selection or input list can also be used for other things. For example, this is my Xiaomi vibration sensor. And I can use it to select how sensitive it is. High, medium and low. While we are already here, let's also look at the map card changes. Don't confuse map card that ends up as a card or tile inside your UI with map in your navigation bar. If you have map card, you can add list of entities that you want to display on that card. If you want to have devices that you want to display on that card map, you would just list them here. But now we also have option to customize it. If we click on show code editor, here I have two additional options that were not available previously. One is called label mode and the other one is focus. Label mode allows you to see either name of the entity or state of the entity. For example, if you have entity state with the quality of the air, you can either have name there or the actual state of the air quality. In this case, if I replace name with state, I can see that I'm away. The other option is focus. Currently it's false and if I replace it with true and save, the map will position according to that entity. Depending on the password manager you are using, some of you had issues with password managers and the ability to fill in data in the username and password fields. I didn't have those issues because I'm using Bitwarden and if you do not know what Bitwarden is, check this video up here on how I installed it 
on my Synology and now I have my own private cloud password secure repository for all of my family. And no, you do not need to trust some third party who knows what happens with your data company, such as whatever the company is. That means that now all of those password managers should be supported. Let's look at some other noteworthy changes. For example, if you are using ESP Home, there has been optimization on the location of the files related to ESP Home. This will result in much smaller Home Assistant backup files. My backup is currently 5.2 gigs or around 5 gigs. HomeKit Bridge integration now supports media receivers. Roborock integration has been extended and we now have water and last clean sensor data inside our integration. Wittings integration has been improved and now it's much easier to also integrate with Nabucasa and use webhooks. Rainbird integration now supports calendars. System Bridge supports notifications. And Live360 has now a button that can be used to trigger the location update. If you have been using or trying to use the picture entity card inside Home Assistant, there were also some updates to it. And you can benefit because now you can resize or have image resized the way you want. If we look at code editor, we now have option that is called fit mode. The default fit mode is called cover. With this setting, the image keeps its aspect ratio and fills the given dimension. And the image will also be clipped to fit. The other option is contain. With this option, the image keeps its aspect ratio, but is resized to fit within the given dimension. And last fit mode is called fill. The image is resized to fill the given dimension, and if necessary, the image will also be stretched or squished to fit in the space. There are also some new integrations, such as Apple Weather Kit, that is the replacement for the dark sky. If you are an Apple fanboy, you have extra money, you can pay for that service and then use the Apple's Weather Kit API to connect it to Home Assistant. Plus, of course, some other integrations, such as Echo Forest, IKEA Addison Desk, this is the desk that can be controlled to go up and down, Medcom Bluetooth, Private BLE, which I'll get back in a second, SwitchBot Cloud. While some of you may not be sure for what SwitchBot Cloud can be used, because a lot of you are using BLE support either via the USB stick or even better if you're using Bluetooth proxy. For those of you that do not have Bluetooth proxies or BLE stick, you can now use SwitchBot Cloud. And we also have Weatherflow support for the Tempest weather system. Let me get back to private BLE Cloud. Well, first of all, I think that the idea with the random MAC addresses is really bad. I do get it why some manufacturers thought that this would be a great idea to randomize the MAC addresses so that people cannot be tracked via the MAC address. But also as somebody that's working in enterprise and with enterprise customers, one of the first things that everybody implemented on the network was MAC address filtering, meaning that I allow selected list of known MAC addresses on my network, while all the other unknown MAC addresses will be kept on the network. You see the issue here, but we will not be talking about that. The second problem, of course, with those randomized MAC addresses is that you cannot use those devices as a trackers because they randomize their MAC address. And if you try to use all MAC addresses, then you get a list of half a million MAC addresses in just a couple of days. Now there is a way to retrieve the key and you can use that key to find and connect it with the device that is using this randomized MAC address. And then, of course, you can also track that device inside Home Assistant and use it as a device tracker. On the other hand, if this is already your mobile phone, I would suggest that you install either the iOS app because, yeah, or also Android companion app. It's much better device tracker. Plus, in this release, we also have some integrations that have migrated from the YAML to UI. They are Aftership, Color Extractor, and I did video on that too, Hunter Hydrawise, Nextbus, Todoist, Twitch, World Air Quality Index, or Waki. Most of them were just migrated to the UI because it was time for them to migrate to UI. Twitch is another story. Unfortunately, Twitch integration has been broken for a couple of weeks due to changes to the API, login, etc. While I know that Johnny was working on the PR to get it fixed, that was rejected, then semi-approved. In the meantime, devs decided to move this to the UI. And if you do not know who Johnny is, I will be leaving a link in the video description where you can watch his streams, where he goes out and plays games. But I also have to warn you, I myself unfortunately had issues with it. While the migration should have been pretty straightforward, 
for some reason, in my case, no matter what I did, I had issues and I'm still not able to use the Twitch integration. This should be it for this brief recap of what's new in 2023.10. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you do like videos like this, please like the video, but also leave a comment down in the comment section below, because I'm seriously considering to stop doing videos like this. Unfortunately, in the last couple of months, I've seen a steady decline in number of views for those videos, so I just don't see a point in wasting my time testing everything, testing with beta, running it on a couple of systems, etc., when nobody is watching those videos. On the other hand, if you don't like them, also leave me comments, because it will help me decide whether I will continue doing them or not. While you are already in the comment section below, check that you are subscribed, because you do not want to miss my next videos, where I will be looking at some of the new and cool stuff, such as, for example, SwitchBot K10 Plus Smart Vacuum Cleaner, new Sonoff Smart Thermostatic Radiator Valve, some new motion and presence sensors, cool displays, and much, much more. And before I wrap up this video, I really want to thank all those wonderful people that are supporting me and that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. But let's not forget each and every one of you who has watched, liked, commented and subscribed to my channel. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below and becoming a YouTube channel member for only 2 euros or 2 dollars per month, or you can go to my merchandise store and get something there. I will be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.